What's up, VC? Brian here, Cosmic Vinyl. Messing with my volume again. God damn you! <laughs> you guys enjoy my little freak outs? You make fun of me behind my back, right in my face. Anyway, uh, this is Brian from Cosmic Vinyl coming back with another video for ya. Um, actually, this is round two on this video. I failed to meet the copyright requirements. Here, give me a second. I'll be right back. No edits on this son of a gun. I gotta move my fan. Sorry, I'm still here, VC. Don't, I didn't leave you. Here, I'm back. All right. Anyway. What happened was, like an idiot, I was playing prints of all things in the background. Why would I think I could get away with that? I have no idea, but anyway, um, wanted to give it another shot. It was kind of a sucky video anyway, so we're going to go for a little better quality this time. Anyway, I, I've been on this kick, um, kind of a lot of like uh, power pop. A lot of 80s like new wave 80s alternative 80s pop just some cool stuff that I've been I've been landing and um, some of it's like late 70s too but it sometimes gets lumped in with like the um, the 80s stuff so um, I'm just gonna dive right in first of all what we're listening to in the background here um, is a record by a band called sparks Sparks is a couple of guys here. Um, look at that. It's a, it must be some kind of promo or something, like a radio station promo, I think, or something. But anyway, there it is. Sparks. Um, this is what's on the back of it. But um, I kind of like this, this track that's playing right now called Big Boys. This is actually from 76, but it sure seems like ahead of its time it's kind of um, just seems more like it's got a lot of synthesizers and stuff in it, it just seems more um, new new wave and stuff so and they did kind of evolve into a little bit more of a um, kind of a synthy sound um, in fact I've got another record of theirs that I'll show in another video but um, yes and in fact, I don't want to talk too much about this because I'll probably feature this in that video too. So anyway, a little sparks right here is what we're listening to. Um, but moving right along, I'm going to open up with this. Dan from Dots and Loops um, had a, um, a video not long ago where he showed some power pop records. And, um, you know, like, I think he closed it out with the king of power pop, which was a cheap trick. But... Another record that he showed was by this band called 2020. And so I took his advice and I went with this record and I'm not at all um, disappointed. I really like this record. They're active um, mostly from the 77 to 83. Um, this is their debut album. Think Cheap Trick or The Knack. Um, uh, hits that I or I don't know if they're hits or not, but songs that I like off this record, um, Yellow Pills, not because of my history or anything, but because it's just a cool little song. Um, but also it's kind of straightforward, just power pop. Um, they they look they sound a lot like they look. So if you can kind of go with that idea. It's awesome, pick you up, pop filled record. Um, Yellow pills. Um, what was the other one? Um, Tonight we fly, and another song called "Leaving Your World Behind" that I really like too. So, um, yeah, definitely not disappointed in the 2020. Um, I'm thank you, Dan at Dots and Loops for the for the heads up on that one. Um, but another record that I really, and I just got this one, and I got that one, I think I got that one and this one I sent away for, so, oh, I hate these plastic that you got, that's got the sticky on it. 
but it is what it is. I do like that it's nice and shiny. It makes your makes the colors on your record just pop. But speaking of pop, um, the vapors. You guys know the vapors, don't you? Um, there's the vapors on the back there. Um, the vapors were probably you probably know them from the song Turning Japanese. Um, they're a power pop band from like 78 to 81. Um, top 10 single turning Japanese was number 3 in England, number 36 in the U.S. I like that um, cover right there. It's just kind of like infrared or something weird. And there's the weatherman. It's called New Clear Days. Um, I, I love this record. I mean, I, I liked um, the song Turning Japanese, which was rumored as been, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but it was rumored to be about masturbation. But... Um, the singer and and uh, the writer of the song, um, his name is Fenton, uh, David Fenton. He denies that that was actually the purpose or, or the inspiration behind the song. But you know, whoever he thanks, whoever did do it, because it helped him sell lots of records, um, probably hundred thousand records just on that fact alone. So. And here, let me ask you this. How does a guy get his hair to, with that, like, hole thing in the middle right there? Right there, I've seen, like, some of the 80s hair bands have that look. And I've also seen it on, a guy on the Bay City Rollers has that look, too. How strange. But anyway, there's a song on here um, called Letter from Hero, H-I-R-O. And I'm not sure what it's about. It's just kind of an odd track. Um, I don't know if it's about like nuclear war or what. You guys give it a listen and let me tell me what you think. But um, I, I like this record a lot, by the way. So I've been jamming it a lot lately. I like their little logo too. It's pretty cool. So anyway, the Vapors, people. Turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. Da -na 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 -na. Um, what's next? Uh, Bram, Bram, Brom, Tchaikovsky. Now, this is kind of a crazy record, Still in the Shrink. Um, the title track is probably, uh, it's called In My Dr Girl In My, oh no, title track is Strange Man. This is Strange Man, Change Man. Strange Man is a great song on this record. Um, also Girl In My Dreams, according to the hype sticker. Also, this has was regularly six ninety nine at Target at one time. Um, I'm thinking back in eighty one or something, I don't know. But anyway, um uh that song Girl My Dreams is a great song. But it says six ninety nine but it was on sale for four dollars and forty four cents, which I think is kind of an odd price, don't you think? Four forty four. Weird um, but anyway, Bram Tchaikovsky, I think he's, um, uh, I want to say, um, British maybe, and, and he, he, it's not a band, it's a guy, but, um, Mike Oldfield also played on this record, the, you know, Mike Oldfield from Tubler, Tubler, Tubler Bells, Tubular Bell, Bueller, Bueller, Tubular Bells. I'm, I'm giving up on that. Um, anyway, Bram Tchaikovsky. Um, I think this was the extent of the output under that name. So, But it's kind of cool. I'm, I mean, think. I know this is going to sound weird. He's kind of got a unique voice. Cross between like the birds and Bruce Springsteen with a little bit of peppered in um, some power punk style kind of. But, yeah, I like it. Um, I never seen this record around, so I grabbed it. It was in this collection that I bought. Um, and now I see it all the time. Like, everywhere I go, I've seen this record. So I guess not, not as unique as I thought. Um, next is a group called The Suburbs. Another, like, 80s kind of pop, um, power pop, new wave, synth kind of stuff. But there's, uh, there's the burbs right there. You see that, folks? Um, anyway, um, they're a band, uh, they're like an American alternative. I don't know if I'd call it punk, but pop and 
new wave band from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, they, the producer of this was, um, oh hell, what was his name? Robert Brent, uh, more commonly known as um, Bobby Z, who was um, the drummer for uh, Prince's Revolution Band. So there's your Minneapolis Prince connection, pulling that all together. But apparently, um, Bobby Z didn't do them any favors because this band could have been really cool, like a B-52s type thing or Gang of Four. They had that kind of sound before this album became produced and chewed up and spit out as another just 80s cliche album. So from what I've read about it. I don't mind 80s cliche, so I like this record. It's poppy and fun and upbeat and um, not going to lie, I like it. So whatever they said um, about it. Um, these guys frequently headlined like First Avenue where Prince, that, that was Prince's club, and uh, Jay's Longhorn in Minneapolis. So outside of Minneapolis, so I don't think they made too much of a, a splash. So anyway the suburbs I like it what's next oh out of out of the lot of all these records I'm going to show this this is my favorite by far not even close uh, this is by a band called wall of voodoo um, this is called call of the west sorry about if there's a glare I know it's in the shrink I decided I didn't want to pull the shrink it's got the they're known for the song Mexican radio as uh, according to the um, the um, hype uh, sticker. Um, there's the boys right there, led by um, the the singer. Um, oh, what the fuck is his name? Stan Ridgeway. Um, anyway, and he left the band after this album. They tried to carry on without him, but never really did anything as near as good as this record for sure. Um, imagine this kind of sound. A combo of new wave, um, synth, and spaghetti western. Um, I know it sounds odd, but it works. Um, there's he play he plays a lot of harmonica, and it just kind of like took me back to like the Ennio Morricone um, like soundtracks for like Good, Bad, and the Ugly and um, those movies. Um, and I think it was because. Uh, Stan and I think Mark Moreland worked at a sound stage uh, like that did sound um, that did soundtracks prior to doing this record so that might have been part of the influence but I love this record you you may I'm sure you've heard Mexican radio and you know how quirky it is and how strange it is but um, that doesn't even touch what this record is. This record is a darkness to it, and kind of a, a, a just an, a kind of almost a creepy undercurrent to it. Um, songs like um, "Lost Weekend" and "They Don't Want Me," "Spy World," "On the Interstate." Um, this is just I I can't recommend this. This is like anybody that likes shoegaze and stuff like that will probably like this record. I love it. I wish I would have. I only knew Mexican Radio up until this point. I never checked this album out, and I absolutely dig it to no end. A couple of these guys have passed on. Um, I think Chaz T. Gray, the synthesizer and bass. I think he's died, and uh, I know a couple of these guys are gone for sure. But um, yeah, Wall of Voodoo, folks, check it out. You won't be disappointed if you like your. Uh, it's kind of got an oingo boingo kind of voice, um, voice to it too, but um, or no, not, I'm sorry. They opened for oingo boingo. I'm thinking of a different band that I'm going to talk about, but yeah, it's a it's a great record though. Check it out. Um, here's one that I don't see very often, and I absolutely love 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 this record. Um, I actually love the single off of it more than anything. Every '80s comp that I ever made, like a mixtape or any 80s comp that I bought um, on on cassette, I always had to have this song on it. This is by a group called Reflex. 
and the song is called The Politics of Dancing. And it it's a great song. Um, you could call these guys a one-hit wonder for sure. Um, it's a British band. This is their debut. Um, very like a lot of electronic stuff, a lot of electronic keyboards, electronic percussion, um, computers, lots of like uh, stuff like that. It's it's a it's a dance record. It really is. Um, in fact, I would have included this on my dance video, um, but I wanted to show it in a separate video like this, a, a vinyl finds video. <clears throat> but um, yeah, very danceable songs. I could see like a lot of hip hop artists maybe um, sampling from this record. But praying to the beat, um, hurt, politics of dancing, all great songs. Also, another song called Sensitive is good on this, too, but kind of a cool record. But, um, yeah, I dig it. It's got that totally 80s vibe. Um, so, yeah, this is something you don't see every day. At least I don't. I love these, like, 80s stuff that's out of print. I'll, I'm a sucker. I'll pick it up every time. Um, here's one that I'm sure everybody's heard of before, the band and the record. It's um, probably... I think it's their second studio album and probably their um, most well-known record. But this is The Fix. I showed some Fix not too long ago, their first record. Um, <clears throat> but this is the second one. This has uh, the, the hits One Thing Leads to Another, uh, Sign of Fire, and Saved by Zero. Um, I absolutely love The Fix. I love this record, this cover too, this art. Um, I don't know what's going on here if this guy this very muscly, lean individual with the, some kind of bound, he's got bind, he's bound somehow, maybe escaped, and he was just trying to reach the beach, which is the name of this record, so, um, there's the fellas on the side there from the beat, or from the fix, um, yeah, uh, great bass lines in this, um, I, I, one thing I never listened to I don't know if it's just that I've gotten older and I listen more as astutely to this or acutely or whatever. Um, that um, I just dig the bass lines in a lot of these 80s records. This one, um, any the Duran Duran bass lines are killer. Any A lot of those bass lines in those 80s records are just amazing. But yeah, this is really good. Um, this These guys continue to tour the world with basically the same lineup that they had on and the, during their heyday, which is this era. So yeah, um, you can pick this up for anywhere from $3 to $10. So yeah, and this is in pretty good shape. And I got that for like three bucks. So the fix, folks. <laughs> fix, folks. Um, here's another record. This is the last one I'm gonna show. Um, I like I said I'm a sucker for these kind of records these out of print records this is Romeo Void Romeo Void um, this is an album called Benefactor sorry I'm falling apart here I'm falling apart on you darling um, first I'll show you the record here there's the, the cover at, right there for Romeo Void Benefactor there's the back the track listing I don't know if I'm holding it too close. There you go. Um, Romeo Void is, there's this inner sleeve. It's got the, the art there, and then you've got uh, the lyrics. Uh, they were a band of uh, art school students um, who met and um, put together a band. Her name is Deborah Eyal, is the vocalist. And, um, she always kind of got a bad rap for being like overweight. I don't even think she was white either, but uh, I'm telling you, this gal can sing, and I really love her sound. The song that um, Romeo Void was known for was called um, Never Say Never, and um, it was, Might like you better if we slept together. Might like you better if we slept together. Never never say never and it was dun, 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 and it had like horns and like a saxophone it's some of it even sounds like kind of skyish i don't want to it's not ska though but you know it's got like the the um 
saxophone that makes it sound kind of makes it gives it a unique sound um yeah i dig this record for sure um they're an american new wave post-punk band named after um seeing a um an article in um uh the a magazine um la magazine with the headlines why single women can't get laid in san francisco i don't know what that has to do with romeo void actually taken literally means um no sex or a void of any sexual i don't or i don't know or void of romance i don't know but anyway i'm trying to figure that out but anyway um this is kind of a more commercially uh acceptable record than the ep that they put out prior to this but i love this record this i love um that song never never say never um they were known also for um being a band that was on a vh1 uh show called bands reunited it was this cat that got these uh, tried to go around and get these members of 80s bands back together for like a one-off show they did it with the alarm um they did it with um oh god what was the name of that band that um i can't think of it I'll, I'll come up with it at some point and i'll tell you about it in another video but um romeo void was also one of the bands that they were successfully able to get back together and get them to perform so yeah um check out those uh if you can find those band reunited episodes like on youtube or something they're pretty entertaining um anyway um that's my vinyl finds video um i've got tons more vinyl this show i really do i just don't want to take up a bunch of time up I'll, I'll do some um <clears throat> i'll do a couple more vinyl finds videos soon but i wanted to get that one out there first um so anyway, got some more like Power Pop, some 80s, uh, got some no new psych stuff, I uh, got a little bit of everything. So yeah, um, this is Brian, I'm going to sign off with this um, at the end of this video, but uh, keep checking Cosmic Vinyl and uh, uh, keep rolling them out. Um, I don't know, I bet I've said um, probably 40 times in this video, you'll have to check it out, do an um count. I will be, uh, I want you guys to have a great night tonight, have a great day tomorrow, um, I'll catch you next time, this is Brian from Cosmic Vinyl, bless you all, have a great night. Might like you better if we slept together, might like you better if we slept together, never, never say never VC.